Hey there everyone, it's Michael and during this video I'll share my experience taking phosphatidylserine as a nootropic supplement. We'll go over the benefits, how to take it, and some of the side effects as this is a nootropic supplement that I was initially exposed to uh, six years ago because I was a student and I was looking for pretty much anything to help me get a boost of productivity and I feel like phosphatidylserine really is one of the more underrated nootropics out there. Phosphatidylserine clearly improves cognition, helps to slow down cognitive decline as well. There's improvements with ADHD, specifically in younger individuals, improvements with attention, fatigue, um, even golf performance. I looked into this specific study on golf performance and it was really intriguing because what so is, it was a fairly well conducted study. It was a randomized, double blind, placebo controlled study done to evaluate the effects of phosphatidylserine specifically. So they just measured the effects of phosphatidylserine specifically on golf performance in healthy young golfers with the handicaps of 15 to 40. The study duration was for 42 days where the subjects took phosphatidylserine or a placebo prior to making their golf swings. And what they found was the number of good ball flights was much higher and the stress perception for all the people that were teeing up was actually improved as well, which goes to show you that in a practical sense, if it can work on the golf course, likely it can work in a business setting or for students. I remember using this as a student and it really improved my memory, especially when I was sleep deprived. Where this nootropic supplement specifically is a little bit misunderstood is who is it applicable for? Is it applicable for people younger, middle-aged, or for seniors? And a lot of the data and the research suggests that this is most effective with people who are elder to help them with cognitive decline or um, especially help people who have some some form of dementia but um, it's definitely been my experience that when you take phosphatidylserine, although it is a little bit expensive, it really helps to reduce fatigue. If we were to take into consideration the really important hormone called cortisol, which is a stress hormone, having too much of it is known to really impair your cognition and even known to make you gain weight. Phosphatidylserine is one of the only substances out there that in a healthy fashion actually reduces cortisol levels like ashwagandha does. So if you don't like ashwagandha yet you want to lower your cortisol levels, then this is a great alternative because as this study suggests over here, phosphatidylserine did help individuals who were trained when it came to um, helping their cortisol response to moderate intensity exercise. So when people exercise, usually it does increase cortisol, which isn't always favorable because it can actually hurt the anabolic response that you may get to training your muscles. So if you want to build muscle, then having too much cortisol isn't ideal. And what they found was the individuals who were taking phosphatidylserine actually didn't have as much of a high cortisol response when they were training, which obviously helped them when it comes to growth and recovery. And anecdotally speaking, what I had found when I was using phosphatidylserine for productivity was on days when I was somewhat sleep deprived, the combination of using like caffeine along with phosphatidylserine was really, really helpful. Caffeine is really good at energizing you when you're sleep deprived, but it didn't really give me like the memory benefit that I wanted and I needed because I was a student at the time. However, it was like as soon as I took that stack, my memory was like razor sharp. I could recall everything that I had learned like the prior day in my courses or whatever I was reading. And then it really struck me that phosphatidylserine is not only good for memory, but as well like learning retention. So if you're a student, this is definitely something that you want to consider. You may have to um, increase your dose to more than what's normal, which is something we'll talk about. But that's when you should notice phosphatidylserine. Like it's not always the best thing for elders. If you are younger, you should likely have benefits as well, which is probably why that it is in so many nootropic blends out there like Quality of Mind. Quality of Mind, we can see here, we've got 100 milligrams of phosphatidylserine, and they also do have caffeine, which makes for that nice pair together. Yet Quality of Mind does not have ashwagandha, which goes to show you, like I mentioned, um, if you want to reduce your cortisol, if you want to be uh, somewhat in like a more present state, then you may want to throw out the ashwagandha because it can demotivate you and use phosphatidylserine as a nice alternative, especially if you're somebody like myself who also exercises. Yet phosphatidylserine is something you can use on like a need to use basis. Maybe if you're not somebody who's elder and you're using it for cognitive decline, but if you're using it for performance, I have found that specifically using phosphatidylserine on those days when I need a bit more energy, on those days when I really want to fight fatigue, using it sometime like halfway during the day, maybe like four or five o'clock will help with productivity. And like I mentioned, using it when you're sleep deprived will make sure that your memory is still sharp, your thinking and your ability to learn is still as it usually is. I realize that a lot of you are probably against taking supplements, especially supplements like phosphatidylserine, which are naturally occurring and can be found in foods. However, the bad news is, is that you're probably not going to get a lot of phosphatidylserine in your diet. 
Um, according to Wikipedia, they state that the average daily phosphatidylserine intake in a Western diet is estimated to be 130 milligrams, but I don't think this is conservative. I actually think that the average daily phosphatidylserine consumption is somewhere between 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams. And the reason for that is because they've listed the foods which are richest in phosphatidylserine. And if we look at the top three, we've got bovine brain, we've got Atlantic mackerel, and we've got chicken heart. And you really have to scroll down in the list to find foods which are regular consumed in your diet. Like take beef, for example, a 100 gram serving of beef has 69 milligrams of phosphatidylserine, for example. Pork is at 57 milligrams. And when I was taking phosphatidylserine and actually enjoying it, I had to use higher doses in order to get that immediate benefit. However, now I'll admit that phosphatidylserine is not something I'm consuming every day. There's a few ways you can go about taking phosphatidylserine. You can be somebody who uses it daily uh, for a long period of time, or you can be somebody who uses it when they need to. However, not everybody seems to notice it when they take it. I'm somebody that personally does. So because of that, I've always taken the approach of using it just when I needed to, just when on those days when I was sleep deprived, because it really had that nice benefit. A very common question asked about phosphatidylserine is whether or not you need to have it with the meal. Should you have it with the meal, or if you fast, is it still appropriate? And I would say it's ideal to take with a meal. However, it is still beneficial to take and you will still likely notice results if you do take it fasted. I personally found like it seems to be a little bit more noticeable when I consume it, especially with like a fat rich meal. So I'm somebody that eats a lot of Brazil nuts and I eat a lot of extra virgin olive oil because of the health benefits. And I find that when I mix phosphatidylserine like 200 milligrams with that kind of meal, I can really notice the effects working. However, I'm somebody that does practice intermittent fasting and I don't usually eat until like later portion of the day, like sometimes like five or six o'clock. And I notice that when I take phosphatidylserine like early in the day, whether it's morning or early afternoon, I can still notice it working well, but not as good as it is typically with a meal. And otherwise people ask if you need to take time off of it, do you build a tolerance to phosphatidylserine? And this is the tricky thing is that it's really going to depend. Just like other really popular nootropics um, like L-theanine or even ashwagandha, some people don't really build up a tolerance and therefore don't need to cycle off of it too much. Um, I'm somebody that never needed to cycle off of phosphatidylserine. Even during the very um, intense period of my life when I wasn't getting much sleep, I would still notice the same benefits of phosphatidylserine like a month into taking it that I felt the very first day. So for me, I wasn't cycling off of it much. However, for you, really be mindful of the effects use common sense. If you're somebody who really responds well to it now, but you stop noticing the results like a week from now, then I would definitely take some time off. And people have different styles of going about this. Some people like taking a, a typical strategy of going like five days on, two days off, like weekdays they'll take their supplement, weekdays they won't take their supplement. I'm somebody that if I don't really build a tolerance to it, then I'm usually taking time off like every 90 days or so, but I really don't keep it like that structured. I'll just wait until like I have a vacation or I fly out of town to um, have that break with that particular supplement as it's um, a lot you know, easier for me knowing that I don't have to carry around that supplement and I can take my time off or periodically what I'll do is I'll wait until I run out of a supplement and then I'll wait like a couple of weeks before reordering it to make sure that I can kind of make my receptors more likely to feel them working afterwards because sometimes you really just don't know and it takes a lot of um, using nootropics, trying different stacks in order for you to recognize if you really are building a tolerance or not, which can make it really tricky, of course, if you're somebody like myself that uses different nootropic stacks. And speaking of nootropic stacks, I've actually made a video covering 10 very simple nootropic stacks in this video over here. I really hope you found this video educational. And if you did, then consider subscribing. Thank you for your interest in nootropics. And if you'd like to ask questions to the rest of the members of the community, then consider joining our Discord. If you'd like to speak to me one-on-one, -on -one, then uh, be sure to enroll in our Patreon subscription and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.